Hello everyone, this is Dr. Seher again from Dentabest.com and this is the comprehensive review on pediatrics that we are going to do today. So these are the topics we are going to cover uh, in pediatric developmental disturbance of the teeth, anomalies, management of child behavior, anesthesia, nitrous oxide sedation for children, restorative dentistry for children, pulp treatment for primary teeth, space maintenance, perio problem, dental trauma, and some miscellaneous topic. So this is the development of teeth. As we know, it has different stages. The bud stage, the cap stage, the early bell stage, and the bell stage. So bud stage, we can see there's a dental lamina, right? It is arising from the oral epithelium. And this dental lamina will make thickening at the site of tooth bud formation. So in a primary dental lamina, will have thickening at 20 places because we have 20 primary teeth. Then you can see it is give, taking a shape of a cap in the cap stage. In the cap stage, we can see it has uh, four layers, three layers being added. Uh, you have the outer enamel epithelium, which has the short cuboidal cell, inner enamel epithelium, which has tall columnar cell. And in between, you have star-shaped cells, stellate reticulum, that are filling up the spaces. Next to inner enamel epithelium, you have dental papilla that is going to give rise to the dentine and the pulp of the future tooth and surrounding the cap you have dental follicle that is going to give rise to PDL, cementum and the bone. This is the bell stage now in which we can see four layers in the enamel organ. You have the inner enamel epithelium, you have the outer enamel epithelium, you have stellate reticulum and there is one more layer that is added here that is called as stratum intermedium. The bell stage is the stage of histodifferentiation and morphodifferentiation. The morphodifferentiation, the shape of the tooth is determined and histological differentiation, different cells are being formed like odontoblast making dentine, cementoblast making cementum, ameloblast making enamel matrix. Mainly in the exam, they can ask you that what are the anomalies that can happen if you have disturbances in any of these stages. For example, if you have disturbance in the bud stage, right, so the tooth could be missing no but or having an extra bud can lead to supernumerary teeth while in the cap stage if you have disturbances it can lead to fusion germination while the bell state differences can lead to uh, amylogenesis imperfecta dentogenesis imperfecta now as per the age there are variable influences of the behavior of the child in your dental settings usually children who are younger than two or three years of age they lack cooperative ability between 2 to 3, you have wide range. Children who can communicate in this age, you can start doing tell should do for to them. 3 to 7, most often they are cooperative. Familiarization technique, shaping technique works very good. Maternal anxiety has the highest influence on the child behavior, especially in the children until age 4. So when you are taking the anxiety scale, 0 to 10 in the dental office, not only of the child, but maternal mother anxiety scale or the parental anxiety scale is also very important. Sometimes an anxious child in your dental office has nothing to do with you. He is actually anxious because of his parents behavior. Children who have a bad uh, experience in the medical uh, setting, he is going to be not very cooperative even in the dental setting. One thing that is very typical about kids when they know they have some uh, problem, they are going to avoid going to the doctor they will give reluctance to that but this is one major problem now you can see some of the anatomical difference between the primary and the permanent teeth thinner enamel uh, they have larger pulp chamber their pulp horns are very close to surface the enamel rod are slope occlusally that's the reason we do not need a bevel for the gingival seat for the primary for the class 2 molar preparation they have more constriction, they have more bulges, dentine shades are more whiter, enamel and dentine, why? Because enamel has high mineral content there, although it is thinner, so more chores of caries are still there. Smaller teeth, so their table is narrow, exaggerated buccal and lingual cervical ridges and bulges. And their roots are more flared, more divergent, less root trunk, shallower anatomy. Now, they are some of the primary tooth fact also that you can memorize, like largest primary tooth, mandibular second molar smallest mandible lateral incisor now one thing you should remember that the mandibular first molar is the most unique tooth of all mandibular second molar will look like mandibular first molar permanent so it will have all the five cusp including the distal cusp but the difference is that the distal cusp 
which is in the permanent mandibular first molar is the smallest cusp but in case of mandibular second molar primary it will be as large as mesobuccal distobuccal now for the maxillary the primary maxillary first molar look like premolar like a small cuspid while the second molar maxillary will look like a permanent maxillary first molar so it will have the oblique ridge it will have the mesobuccal mesolingual distobuccal distolingual and also cusp of caraboli is present for maxillary canine primary they have a longer and sharper cusp and mesial cusp ridge is longer than the distal cusp ridge characteristic of primary mandible molar so as i told you there is a very prominent transverse ridge here class 2 preparation are difficult although the pulpal horns are very high so chances of exposure are very common tension now you can see the pulpotomy in which you are removing the portion of corneal pulp as we already know from endo you are using a slow speed revolving round burr or a spoon excavator so done on the vital primary tooth you can use formo so after you are removing it you can see you are putting the formo cresol dipped in cotton pallet or ferric sulfate on the pulp stump and then you are giving the zoe over it so you are preventing the tooth from getting non vital pulpotomy so vital primary tooth with carious exposure signs of normal pulp otherwise the tooth is very normal there is no sign of periapical radiology no swelling drainage no methodological mobility that means tooth is all white now space maintenance is a very important topic of exam you always always have questions on space maintenance so primary incisor loss you don't need space maintenance actually you are replacing the primary incisor only for aesthetics and function because primary incisor loss will not decrease any space for younger children you can give uh, fixed processes or a partial denture or used on the patient under 3 year old who are lacking the cooperation lingual ectopic eruption of the permanent can give a double row of teeth so if primary incisor still in place and the permanent have erupted they have become mobile you just extract them extract the primary incisor permanent incisor loss is very unfortunate it can lead to a very quick space loss you have to construct insert the plants as soon as possible primary canine loss that's very important so if you have a unilateral primary mandibular canine lost it is going to lead to two things midline shift loss of arch length and distolingual collapse of the permanent mandibular incisor so to avoid the midline shift you can remove the mandibular canine of the other side too and you can put a lower lingual holding arch appliance we'll see here these are different appliances like your band and loop maintainer is there it's a unilateral appliance for example your primary first molar is lost prematurely then primary second molar loss you do the distal shoe appliance that's a very important appliance that will guide the eruption of permanent first molar right into the place so it doesn't go into the lost second primary molar space once the premolars are about to erupt you will remove that distal shoe extension this is a nance appliance that is for uh, multiple bilateral space maintenance where there is a premature loss of the primary molar it has acrylic button on the pallet that sometimes could be difficult to clean under okay so let us see uh, some of the viral condition here where we can see herpetic gingivitis stomatitis the primary and the acute herpetic gingivitis stomatitis so primary herpetic gingivitis stomatitis it happens in younger children under age 6 uh, with the first time exposure to the virus when the child is not very sick actually he just have one or two ulcers inside his mouth mild fever parents can even not notice it but acute herpetic is when the child is actually very sick mainly in older children above age 5 or in young adults you see acute herpetic and you see very severe signs and symptoms high fever lymph node enlargement very painful multiple ulcers inside the mouth so treatment is to give topical anesthetics diphenhydramine antiviral like acyclovine ointment and symptomatic relief by giving analgesics ibuprofen to the patient now if the child is had the acute herpetic in his childhood he can reactivate it in the adulthood when exposed to sun trauma stress less immune 
and can lead to recurrent herpetic labialis that is defined as a cold sore on the lower lip. So treatment is systemic or topical antiviral herpetic labialis condition. Now this is localized aggressive periodontitis also called a juvenile. So this or early periodontitis, early onset periodontitis. So localized aggressive periodontitis is mainly localized to the molars, first molars and the incisors. The etiology here is not actually plaque, it is genetic. The patient has a genetic predisposition because of defect in the chemotaxis factors of the neutrophils and then they are having uh, increased AA count that is increased actinobacillus actinomycetum counts the bacteria that is the main bacteria involved in aggressive periodontitis. Treatment if they ask you to debride surgery antibiotics metronidazole with amoxicillin and tetracycline that will arrest any rapid bone loss tooth are not a good candidate for reimplantation. Now this is your LS classification class 1 to class 9 you can go through it and we can see trauma injury to primary dentition is only coming under class 9. You can see also about the splinting. So orthodontic wire flexible splinting is mainly preferred in children so that there is no ankylosis of the primary. Now Floyd supplementation table we know this children between age group 6 months to 16 years are given fluoride supplementation if they have less than 0.6 ppm fluoride in the drinking water. It's a very important table. They can ask you any question from here. So please memorize this entire table. Fluoride displaces calcium and calcium displaces the fluoride. Now, if the child has a fluoride toxicity, you have to give him milk because calcium in the milk will displace the fluoride from the blood. And highest concentration of fluoride you see in the outermost enamel layer and proximal surfaces are most benefited from the fluoride. Now the toothpaste contain 1100 ppm of fluoride that's your commercial toothpaste but prescription fluoridated toothpaste can have anywhere from 5000 to 11000 ppm of fluoride in it. Now this is a fluoride toxic dose that is lethal deadly adults 4 to 5 gram children 50 milligram per kg but probable toxic dose is not deadly or not dead on the spot but require immediate hospitalization like 15 milligram of fluoride per kg. So fluoride mechanism of action is very important. So fluoride interacts with hydroxyapatite to make fluorapatite that decreases the solubility of the enamel. Fluoride also helps in remineralization. Fluoride also inhibit the glycolysis of the bacteria by blocking the glucosyl transferase enzyme. So bacteria cannot produce acid and demineralization cannot happen. Now you can see the autism spectrum disorder. And autism, the most important thing, the child has a problem with the communication. So that is something that you have to deal with the child. Information, diet, oral hygiene, level of cooperation and the medication. Autistic children are also very sensitive to loud noises, smell, sound, light. So you have to keep all these uh, to a minimum level for them. You can see also the management here on the right side. Cerebral palsy children have a poor motor coordination and they have more gastroesophageal reflux, erosion, they have malsary protrusion, more chance of trauma hai. Dental caries may be there. They have a generalized toothache and mouth breathing habit. So it has to be taken care of. Excessive gabbing can also be there. So you have to keep a mouth profit. ADHD children, they have a shorter attention lifespan than a normal child. They are treated mainly with the amphetamine salts. So you try to gain their attention, try to involve them in your treatment like uh, holding the suction for you. ADHD children, they have a shorter attention lifespan than the children of their normal age group and uh, try to keep their appointment shorter, early up morning appointment when they are fresh and they will uh, cooperate more with your treatment. So this is how we are done with your pediatrics review. If you have any question, just text me, email me. Thank you. Hi, my dear student who are preparing for IMDD ADAT or part two exam. Uh, thanks so much for watching this review video of the subject. If you really liked it, please buy the full version by clicking on the link given in the description. With the purchase of every video, you will be getting free live assessment and evaluations on the subject as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the DentaBest channel now to get the latest updates on the smart videos. If you have any questions, please comment me in the box below. I, Dr. Seher from DentaVest, wishes you all the best for exam and thanks again for watching.